Your project is going to be to design an exhibit for the aquarium that we don't have. Um, our grade level is fourth grade and um, we, the project the students are working on right now is an integrated project with, with all subjects, starting with uh, reading, language arts, social studies, uh, math and science, and um, they are researching an animal um, that they would like to be showcased at an exhibit at the Texas State Aquarium. Uh, we invited a um, representative from the Texas State Aquarium to come over to the auditorium and speak to the children about um, the exhibits at the Texas State Aquarium, what their mission is at the aquarium and their goal. Um, she then challenged the children to create an um, exhibit uh, of their own um, about an animal that is not at the aquarium at this time. Um, and the animal is specific to the Texas region. So the children immediately were very excited to begin um, designing an exhibit that would possibly be used at the Texas State Aquarium. Basically, you're going to find an animal, or come up with an animal that, like I said, is, follows our mission, that's native to this area, native to Texas, and you're gonna create an exhibit, and you're gonna do this by researching that animal, figuring out where it lives, what kind of habitat, what, maybe a, what other animals it does well with. You know, if you're gonna do otters, should we put fish in an otter exhibit? Because otters are normally found with fish. That's all you guys. You guys are gonna have to create your very own exhibit for the aquarium. Your challenge is to create a presentation on the research of a Texas animal of your choice to include in a proposal that you will give to the Texas State Aquarium to me on why we should include that exhibit at the aquarium on the animal that you researched. And you must include how the research of this animal helps today. So for how scientists can use this information to help research the environment. And then you're gonna have to do a final oral presentation where you create a brochure with supporting evidence on why the animal you researched should be included as an exhibit animal at the Texas State Aquarium and a model of that animal with its habitat, which means that you guys have to measure and create a life-size model of your animal and compare your height and weight to the animal and compare your lifespan to that of the animal. And be prepared because you're going to have to show all of this and present all of this to me. This morning, Ms. Puga and I are going to go ahead and put you in your new groups for our new project today. When it comes to teaming the children for the project, um, we use this, pro this last project as an opportunity to group them with students that they had not been grouped with before. And so we went ahead and joined the two classrooms and we grouped them in groups of three and gave the children an opportunity to work with somebody they hadn't worked with throughout the school year. When it comes to the roles of the project, um, the supply manager, the project leader, the reporter, and so forth, the children decide that when they first get into their groups. Um, they are able to see who is in their group at that time and then decide who would like to um, be which role? I'm the timekeeper. She's a reporter and project leader, and he's the supply manager and organizer. The timekeeper keeps track of how much time we have to work. The reporter. Yeah, they have to write mostly. They have everything. to write everything. Um, we decided because because me and him been together, and I'm I have been in the group with her, but so we're giving her a chance to be project leader. We. But we just decided what we were good best at. I was good against supplies. He is, and he's good at being, being organized and tiny. Yeah, it's like, because he doesn't forget stuff like. At the beginning of the project, the children were able to identify what they needed to know to complete the project as a group. Um, we then um, talked about the different uh, workshops that they could request in order to get the project completed. Um, from, from that point, the children spent the next couple of days um, requesting different workshops, um, 
of different areas within the project that they needed. Find the answers to the questions that you still have. So together you will fill out what your resources are. Now boys and girls, the next part is probably the most important part of our project plan. And that is deciding which are the different tasks that need to be completed. Use this as a guide as you, try, as you start to fill out your task list. Okay? After you fill out your task, your next question, what are some workshops you're going to need from me? What do you still need help with in order to complete this project? So start thinking today of what workshops you can start to ask for. And then finally at the bottom, the last part would be to list any questions you still have. Anything you still want me to still answer. The antiques for the, the last six weeks and we knew that the children needed some uh, opportunities to research and um, animals is usually uh, a subject that the students enjoy researching and um, we had a desk with Shannon who started to give us some ideas of um, having the children research for an exhibit with the Texas State Aquarium. Because I was thinking we could put this up here and then we could put a little flashlight right here and when you see star and make it shine up and then the reflection will come down. But you know like how in the ocean where they, they can jump out of the water? Well, I don't think that we can make it open and like, like have the pretend that they're jumping out of the water. We have to make, um, we have to like think of an animal and make like an exhibit about the animal's environment. So, and then whenever we're done, it's like, it has to be an animal that they don't have in the Texas State Aquarium yet. Um, no water. <coughs> When the western has white, and then the eastern has a yellow, they switch out. The desk script process uh, for the students for today, and what, this was the second day in which they were working on their models. Um, they got started yesterday. Um, when they got started with the models yesterday, they, they had in their minds what, what they wanted to create. And so we thought today being the second day would be a great opportunity to visit with each group and make sure that they were still on track with the different parts of the rubric. Um, even though they've gotten started, it, it's, it's a really good way to catch them before they get too involved within the project um, to remind them of the different um, parts of the rubric. You want to make sure that you are being as creative as possible, anything you can think of within your model. And looking at what you started with yesterday, I think you are doing a fantastic job with creativity. One of the things that I like about your model is the waterfall. The idea of having a waterfall within the exhibit at the aquarium is a great idea. So that was really neat. The next piece that I want you to remember, especially as you're painting, is neatness. Okay, you will be graded on the neatness of anything you create. Okay, so please remember to keep that um, at, the, at the back of your mind. Neatness is going to be looked at. Okay? You're only on the model right now. Can and we I'm, do that? I'm extremely worried about time. Okay? So, I need you guys to decide who is going to continue with the exhibit. So, I like how here you have the trees because the. It's the pine forest and near swamps and everything. Okay. Um, make sure to have some examples in your exhibit of what it needs to survive. So, what does the coral snake live off of? What does it need for food? The next part of the sharing process is the presentations in, in which the children will be able to showcase what they have created and um, they will be able to present any information that they have found out about their animals, any interesting facts, and, and it's a day in which they are very excited about. The audience for the um, presentation would be uh, inviting the representative from the aquarium back to our campus. Um, in which the children will present each exhibit that they've designed and be able to describe a little bit uh, of what they have in each model um, for the exhibits for the aquarium. What do they eat? They eat insects, insects, insects and plants. Yeah. 
and nuts. Lots of nuts. Uh -huh. So what's special about the exhibit? What's your favorite part? Um, the flying squirrel. The flying squirrel. How many are you going to put in? Uh, maybe like five. Mm -hmm. Two to five. Three. Two to five? Two to five. All right. That sounds good, guys. Good job. Pretty much everything, yeah. huh? And they, they eat other chose. whales. They eat other whales. Even bigger, bigger or smaller. I guess that's why they're called the killer whale, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell me about your exhibit. Well, um, we sort of put all their the animals as much as we could that they eat. Ah. And we just put some seaweed and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But yeah, it's. But it's wet around. So are they usually found alone, or do they have a group? They Sometimes they travel so together. Really yeah, cool. they travel in uh -huh. pods. In pods, very <laughs> nice. So tell me about your exhibit. Uh, we, we decided to make a line in the middle because there are like two different coral snakes oh. in Texas. As a teacher, first um, teaching uh, with the design model of PBL, uh, it, it was a little bit overwhelming in the beginning, um, but by knowing that the end result is the children's um, ability to be creative, um, ability to learn so much about um, different parts of the project because of the PBL process is what um, keeps us moving every day. Um, it's exciting um, to see the children learning um, through the PBL process, um, watching them grow from, from day to day. Um, it, it's just been, it's been a transition from what we were used to doing, but overall it's, it's something that we really enjoy.